at the young Western Australian, Alana Slater. Opening nicely with a handspring front in pike position. Strong run. Good position. Spots the landing. Just one small step backwards. Could do with a tiny bit more height from the horse. And of course distance being a problem. She's such a small girl. Barely taller than the horse. Needs to choose a different vault this time. And she does the same vault, but in tuck position, performs it well. Those vaults, not particularly high start scores, but um, done technically quite well. So the one in tuck position, nice height from the horse, and once again, about a point one on the landing. Could perhaps do with a tiny bit more stretch before she tucks. But good execution from the young Australian and a score of eight back on the vault. And the silver medalist from the all-around competition, Trudy McIntosh. Trudy opening beautifully with that handspring front in layout position. Now she's got a decided advantage. Her start score being 9.9. .9. So with the same execution errors, of course, she's going to end up with a much higher finishing score. A little bit low on the landing. Needed a touch more rotation. Now she needs to choose a different vault in today's rules. It could be from the same family, meaning a handspring entry, or it could be a different family. Let's see what she chooses. And second vault, a Sugahara in layout position with a full twist. So that's showing great versatility. So it's the half on entry. Pushes off the horse, stretches it round. Uh, technically not as well performed as her first vault. The second part of this vault, a little bit bent knees and pikes down a touch too early, but nevertheless a very difficult combination of two volts yes and rewarded by the judges at nine point eri okamuto now from japan very nice high handspring front in pike position and she's a little bit taller than some of the other gymnasts and what a difference it makes just the added amplitude from the horse and the whole look of the vault improves. Keeps the legs stretched throughout. Not very much to take off from in that vault, apart from the obvious landing deductions. Second vault coming up. Pike, half out. So, very happy with herself, and rightly so. Same entry. Strong push, front sunny, and a late half out. Opens out nicely. Good leg form throughout. And good phases of the turn. So, the score for Okamoto, a nine point on the vault now, Vanessa Adler, the all-round champion and the top qualifier for the vault final. Oh, and she's fallen on that first vault, chooses the same first vault as Trudy McIntosh. Well, some words of advice here. Looks fine at the beginning. Oh, she's sort of entered the horse a little bit towards the front too much. Perhaps a hand placement on top of the horse more would have helped her get her whole body over the top, and she just runs out of rotation. 9.9 .9 start score, so 0 0.5 for the four. A couple of other small deductions. She may still be getting roughly a low nine for that.
a beautiful Yushchenko double twist, and that also has a 9.9 .9 start score. So an 18.8 .8 total on start scores will put her in front. There she goes. Perfect body awareness. Minor landing deductions. So even with that error in the first one, she's still in a good position. Well, she is the USA senior national champion, and her score today, a nine point. The second Japanese competitor in the women's vault final is Akiko Kawai, the bronze medalist in the all-round competition. And opening there with a Cuervo in pike position, Cuervo vault, differing from the handspring front with a half out in the timing of the turn. Handspring entry, half turn, back salto out. She's not clear in the phases. Perhaps she'll complete the half turn a little bit sharper. And a bit messy with the legs. Kawhi is, in fact, the defending champion at the Canberra Cup on this piece of apparatus. Let's take a look at her second vault. And she's chosen the same vault again, unless, of course, she was trying to call one as the handspring front half out and one as a Cuervo. Not very clear. Um, and that would be a large penalty if the judges didn't recognise it as two different vaults. That looks like a little bit of an earlier turn, but uh, it's anyone's guess. And the score for Kawhi, a 9.1. Another American now, Lindsay Wing. Nice first vault, Yushchenko style vault, one and a half twist in tuck position. There she goes, reasonably good push from the horse. Always difficult to get a lot of height in a tuck position. The tendency is to bend the knees on the horse. Second vault coming up. Same vault, layout position, well controlled. She does seem to perform the stretch position vault better. It's actually more difficult, but uh, she finds it easier. A little bit closed in the shoulders on the horse itself. The more open the shoulders are, the easier it is to get some good repulsion from the horse. Nice body position and spots the landing well. Well, the Americans are going to be tough to beat in this vault final. And there's the score for Wing, a 9.313. One Americans 1 and 2 in the women's vault, Lindsay Wing and Vanessa Adler. Okamoto of Japan picks up the bronze, Trudy McIntosh of Australia 4th, and Kawhi in 5th position. <laughs> Well, the women move to the uneven bars now, and Pauline Janecki of Melbourne trains at the Victorian Institute of Sport. Giant full turn, straight into Ginga. Oh, she misses it by a mile. Completely misjudges that. Of course, she'll miss the bonus for the connection, and she won't be given the value of the element because she didn't grasp the bar at all. Down to the low bar. And Arabian double front, but uh, misses out on the rotation. Perhaps lost her rhythm due to the fall in the first half of the routine. Well, perhaps some inexperience showing through here. This is Pauline's really first major international competition. Yes, and let's take a look at this again. Giant full turn, and she just releases the bar too early. She's a long way away. Coach can see that's happening and gives her a very handy spot. Dismount, doesn't kick it over enough and just runs out of rotation. And the score, a disappointing one for Shlanecki, a seven point to the bars, and the gold medalist from the vault. Can she maintain the momentum? Lindsay Wing of the USA.
begins with an upright through to eagle grip giant half turn out straight into ginger nicely performed ideal body for bars Uprise, full turn into the Pikachev. She missed that in the preliminary, so it's nice to see her make that combination. Winding up for the dismount now. Double back, full twist, good routine. Well, Lindsay Wing is having a great night in the apparatus finals. Congratulations from her coach there. And here's that Ginger. Small leg separation on the catch. And dismount nicely put up above the bar height. And that's going to be the score to beat a 9.475 back on the bars and Peng Sha from China. And soon half pirouette. Full pirouette into eagle grip. Really difficult combination. Another L grip giant, half turn out. Immediate double layout, or oh sorry, double tuck with full twist. Well, a much cleaner routine for the Chinese here on the bars in these finals. They really had a number of falls in the all round competition, so big improvement. You will see a counter swing to the low bar. They need two bar changes in each routine. Is that pirouette straight through to the dismount? She'll pick up the bonus in connections there. A little bit of foam dropped out of her grips. And the 14 year old from Beijing, a 9.05. Well, this is our first look at the tiny French girl, Marianne Mourier, from the town of Saint Etienne. Giant half turn, front giant is Jaeger. Just to go back down to the low bar. Gaining speed now. Double layout. Good routine. She's just a beginner in international ranks, but I'm sure we'll see a lot of her in the future. Very big talent. She's a ti big talent, but a tiny little thing. There's nothing of her. Quite a determination to her, watching her in training. And there's that double layout. And a score of 8.5 for Morio. Back to the bars and Akiko Kawai. to reverse grip, changes to eagle grip giant, another eagle grip with full turn, nice combinations, oops, she's just, oh she's a fighter, certainly a lot of tenacity. Double layout to finish. Well, that little flip, a real shame because Kawhi was, in fact, the highest scorer in the preliminary round, so was on target for a gold medal. Here's that full pirouette. Straight into the ginger. Catches slightly crookedly. One hand comes off, but she barely misses a beat. Has to stop for a moment here. That's a point three deduction. Many gymnasts would have given up and perhaps fallen off but a good routine otherwise. And Kawhi still in the nines, a 9.1. And now on the uneven bars from Australia, Sarah Devandi. So Devandi starts, nice L grip, giant half turn out. Ginger, oh, oh, she's way off. 
Well, that's a nasty fall for the young Queenslander. Now, normally they'd fall on the stomach. She looks like she's there. She's a little bit crooked. And she just twists as a half turn and lands on the soft matting. I don't think she's hurt herself. She's just taking her time now to catch her breath and uh, compose herself before finishing off the routine. She has 30 seconds from the time when she's fallen to the time when she gets back to the bar. A couple of swings, the judges start judging now. Now that nice L-grip giant position, L-grip giant, double front, half up, and a second fall. Well, it just looked like she lost concentration after that first fall. You can see the disappointment on her face. Normally a very steady routine for her. She's normally quite good on that. There's that L-grip giant position. Goes to the double front, half out, little bit relaxed. The shoulders are behind the hips as she lands. Really snaps the feet underneath her too far I think a uh, score of 7.875 and uh, coach not very happy with her it's a lesson they have to learn back to the bars and another tiny competitor Melissa Wilcox of Great Britain she was out here for the Canberra Cup last year and again featuring in the finals in 97 Healy turn, second Healy turn, giant full, Kachev, little bit still in the swing, not showing very good amplitude in her body positions, but she does have some good combinations. back at dismount so although she's not technically quite as sharp as some of the other competitors she stayed on the bars and that's the most important thing there's that kachev facing outwards you can just see a little bit bent legs going past the low bar not a particularly high dismount a 14-year-old from Bristol picks up an 8.950. 5 -0. Well, Vanessa Atler now, her teammate, is the one to beat. Starts with an uprise, half turn. Giant one and a half, straight through to Tukachev. Paxalto is a low bar. Fumbles on that handstand, manages to cover it, so not too big a deduction for her. Double out, full twist. And really, that's experience for you, being able to cover up the mistake and keep going with the remainder of the routine. There's that release. Great dismount here. Very few girls doing it. Full twist in the first salto in stretch position. And Atla picks up a 9.250. Five Atla in silver again and Kawhi third. Melissa Wilcox, the young Great Britain competitor, fourth. And Marion Moria of France, fifth. 1997 Canberra Cup Apparatus Finals and on the beam Trudy McIntosh of Australia and a real chance for goal. Opening smoothly. Change leg lead, change leg side. concentration for her series. A little bit crooked on the takeoff but pulls it right in on the landing. The most important thing on beam is that the girls commit themselves to their finishing position even if they feel technically it's a little bit off. It's 
That'll jump half. Legs a little bit low in the peak of that jump. Hopefully she's not holding back. Front salto. Immediate changement jump. Great routine. And Trudy McIntosh showing maturity beyond her 13 years. That was a brilliant performance on the beam. So solid under pressure. Here goes that series. Just look on the takeoff here. She looks a tiny bit twisted, but she pulls it straight in on the landing. And the last three times we've seen her perform this beam routine, she has made it beautifully. Well, 9.5, she's the first competitor, but that's going to be very tough to beat. On the beam, our first look at the New Zealand competitor, Alicia Boone. Eighth in the all-round competition. A little bit crooked with the shoulders on the takeoff, but she manages to pull it back into line. Those jumps should have been connected, pausing too long to actually get the bonus connection. Aim series, flip layout. Steady. She's relatively inexperienced at this level. Two flips, double twist dismount. The boom manages to stay on the beam, but I don't think it'll be enough to beat the Australian Trudy McIntosh. Here's that front salto, pausing for a little bit too long, and the jump after that. Heavy on the dismount and not such a high position as she takes off. And the score for Boone in this beam final, an 8.45. <laughs> a bit of relief there, I think. For Pauline Shaneki now. Let's see if she can improve on her bars performance here on the beam. And that's rather a large wobble. It'll attract about a 0.2 deduction. A little bit soft on those leaps and jumps. Looks like she possibly holding back. Difficult series here coming up. Flick flack, Anodi, and she's off to one side. Looks like she's just rushed it. Very, very difficult combination. Fourth jump, half turn to Corbett Flick. Nice little combination. Chaneki, a big improver over the last 12 months. Stretch jump, front salto. With the new rules in place for this Olympic cycle, we're seeing a lot more combination work from the girls on the beam. That's in response to their start score just being nine points if they've got their required difficulty having to build one full point in bonuses. Good dismount. Unfortunate fall for Charneki on that series. Yes, a real shame. Not having a great night. And here we go with the series. Turn too early on that. It's quite crucial in those series that they complete the jump before the turn. 
double twist. Well, stuck the landing, but the fall proving costly. A score of just 8.0. Now, Lindsay Wing, can she make it three from three? She's already won two gold medals in these apparatus finals. Very, very difficult combination on the mount here. Round off, lay out. Oh, she's off. Bit soft on the board. You have to punch the board very hard to get that rotation going. And not only has she missed her mount, but her series, which normally follows, has been omitted. So she's point two down on her special requirements. So very costly for point seven altogether. Concentration pause. Standing Arabian, beautifully done. Only girl I've ever seen to perform that element. Extremely difficult to do. Front salto, a little bit of an arm wave. Misses that connection. Change leg leap, wolf jump, struggles a little bit there into that back dive quarter turn and does cover up for that. Shuffling the feet, trying to find the right position on the end of the beam. Double tuck dismount. So not to beat Trudy McIntosh. Now the first errors of the night creeping in for Lindsay Wing here on the beam. There's that standing Arabian, just fantastic. Knees a little bit apart in that dismount. And things looking better by the minute for Trudy McIntosh. An 8.575 for Lindsay On the beam, the Chinese Dong Feng Chao. And we know that the Chinese are brilliant competitors on the beam, so perhaps a threat here for the gold medal. Well, I spoke too soon. Yeah, she just uh, did that beautifully in the preliminary competition to qualify, but she's cut it around the corner and very, very little margin for error, error on that particular series. Salto. Nice little jump with a quarter turn. Nice to see some changes in combinations. A little bit refreshing for the judges. Chinese girls have very good discipline on all their landing positions. Quite definite about where they want their bodies to be. Makes all the difference. Straddle jump three quarters, very crisp. Controls that sideways landing well. Well, apart from that round off layout, a pretty faultless routine. Yeah, disappointing for Fang Xiao. The Chinese work with great amplitude on the beam. There's that nice front salto. Little straddle jump, quarter turn, through to front support. Well, still a score in the nines despite the fall. 9.050 on the beam. Eri Okamoto. Looking very serious at the start of the routine. Front salto. of three jumps straight into her series slip layout whip very very difficult combination six elements in succession oh, 
something as simple as a full turn, not even performed as well as the six elements in succession. Sometimes they can lose concentration on a very easy part. Nice young bow jump. Has a very nice feel for the beam. Front aerial. Second front aerial, not connected as a series. Second element won't get any value because it's a repeated element. Unlike the men, the women can only have one element not repeated at all. Can't get value for a second time. Round off flip. Nice double twist just now. Duck routine. That was a terrific routine for the Japanese. Coach is happy with that performance. She's already picked up a bronze medal tonight. And here's that flip, layout, whip. Great combination. Round of flip. Very good selection of elements throughout that routine. And for Okamoto, she could be in the medals, a 9.25. Vanessa Atler now with the chance to take gold on the beam. Trudy McIntosh is the one to beat. Oh, a little bit off there. It's hard position to be in chasing somebody. If McIntosh is sitting there watching others. You go flip, flip, lay out. Nicely done. jumps in succession, slightly different leg position on each. Front sunny, oh, bit of a wobble there. All these slight hesitations or movements on the landing. Leg leap, gain a layout, nicely done. That's a great combination. Once again, very, very simple half turn, but a small deduction, maybe a 0.05. This not good. Well, it was a good routine. Will it be good enough? We'll have to wait for the judges' scores. Atla doesn't look entirely pleased. There's that series. And dismount, she really knows where she's at. Haven't seen her falter on that. And her score, a 9.150. It should be good enough for a medal, it is, but not good enough for gold. That goes to the Australian, Trudy McIntosh. Eri Okumoto of Japan, second. Atlet picks up the bronze. Dong Fang Xiao of China, fourth. And Lindsay Wing of the USA in fifth position. And the final apparatus for the women is the floor. And making her first appearance in these apparatus finals from Victoria Brooke Walker. Brooke opening with a beautiful double Arabian. Unfortunately, a few hops take her outside of the floor exercise. And of course, the competitors lose 0.1 for stepping outside of the square. Two and a half twist punch front. The Australian girls have everything there. They've got all the tumbling. They actually have the dance connections. They just d seem to lack a little bit of the charisma selling to the crowd, perhaps projecting their personality. And that's something right across the Australian team members and certainly going to be an important part of our job to do to improve our rankings. Double twist. They're playing it a little bit safe.
final tumbling line, double pike. Well, Brooke Walker, she's had a long wait to make her first appearance in these finals, but she's done well on the floor. The rules for finals being slightly different for those for the all-around, so she's had to upgrade her last tongue line. But there's that beautiful double Arabian. Only a new skill for her, so a little bit uncertain on her landing positions. She'll need to do a lot of volume on those to get it right. Double twist. And her score, a good score, and the one to beat at the moment, a 9.150. Lindsay Wing, the U.S. national champion on floor. Running really strongly, handspring, double front, lands it. Very nicely done. Second line, two and a half twist punch front, popular combination. Showing good changes of pace throughout this routine. The American's choreography is always exceptional on the floor. It's supposed to be a triple twist, but not making it all the way around. Well, that's a strong finish to the 1997 Canberra Cup for the American Lindsay Wing. Four apparatus finals today, a big program for her, but here's this beautiful handspring, double front. Very few girls attempting that because it's such a difficult element. And here, finishing with what should be a triple twist, setting her shoulders back too hard, lacking a bit of height. And a good score, a 9.325, which moves her into the lead. On the floor now, Dong Fang Chao of China. Whip, two and a half twist punch front, beautifully performed. A combination worth 0.5 in bonus points. Very valuable to her. And the crowd getting involved with this music. Jaws always helps the gymnast. Double turn. We'll jump full turn. And there's a display of that amazing shoulder flexibility. Clean double pipe. Used to be that the Chinese women were a little bit weak on tumbling, but not so anymore. There's a triple twist in her third tumbling line. And really showing lovely extension on all of these dance elements as well. Finishing with a double twist. Well, the Chinese camp will be very pleased with that performance from Dong Fang Chao. Great way to finish off this competition. And here's that double pike in her second line. Whip. Two and a half twist. Punch front, very hard combination. And she is the girl they're now chasing, a score of 9.4. Making her second appearance, Marion Morier.
Carol Pike stumbles forward, puts her hands down. And that's just a little bit of inexperience showing through. The French have been known for their very good choreography. And for a young girl, she's showing good expression. One and a half with punch front, very springy. Line, two and a half twists. She's attempting some difficult skills. That's the way to go for these young girls. You have to put it out at some time, better earlier rather than later. Certainly showing plenty of potential for the future. Maria, one of the youngest in this field. Here we have that double pike at the beginning. Just lifting her head up a bit too early on the landing. And finishing, nice technique on the two and a half. Just a bit lacking in the rotation. Coach giving her a couple of corrections. And the score from the judges, an 8.4. And Akiko Kawai qualified in second position for this floor final. Two and a half twist punch front. Whip, whip, double twist, fusion over, combination of acrobatic and dance. She's a little bit messy here. She's reminding me a bit of a grasshopper jumping around. Well, she really is a bundle of energy. She doesn't stop. Not at this stage very aware of... Uh, also dance elements, the quality required in them. That will come with experience. She looks like she has plenty of energy. Oh. Well, spoke too soon. Double pike at the end. Not quite making it around far enough. That's the fourth final for Kawhi. Here we have two and a half twist punch front. Just small execution errors throughout. And here comes this last tumbling line. Doesn't set it up sufficiently and runs out of steam at the end. Well, head first on the double park at the end. Not the way she would have wanted to finish this competition. An 8.7 for Kawhi. And Vanessa Appler now looking to pick up her first gold medal in these apparatus finals. By her standards, a disappointing night. jump double turn makes it look easy it's actually a d element one of the most difficult you can do in the dance category tremendously athletic double layout she moves uh, very lightly for a powerful girl and um, quite expressive in her dance work. Whip half, double twist forwards, a little bit short on the twist.
triple twist to finish. Well, another dynamic performance from Vanessa Appler. The 96th U.S. Junior National Champion and the 97th Senior National Champion. And rising up into that second salto. Very nice technique. Triple twist. And a 9.45. That may be enough for her first goal. Trudy McIntosh on the floor. Already a gold medal on the beam. Pulling back out. Straight into her second tumbling line. Whip. Double pike. Bouncy little floor routine. One and a half with punch front. Has to work hard for this last tumbling line. Finishing with a double pike. Shushin over full. Well, a very successful camera cup for Trudy McIntosh. She can be well pleased with her performances over the past couple of days. And a strong way to finish this competition. Yes, she's shown remarkable maturity in this. There's that lovely first tumble, nice phases of the twist. Finishing with a double pike, although it's a second double pike for the routine, she needs it for her requirements. And a good score, not enough to beat Atlo, but a 9.375. First gold medal for China in the women's events. Dong Feng Chao equal with Vanessa Atlo of the USA on the floor. Trudy McIntosh picking up her second medal, a bronze. And Lindsay Wing and Brooke Walker rounding out the top five.